Hey everybody, I'm Jim Patrick. I'm the sports editor with the Sacramento Bee. We're here with Chris Biederman. He's our uh, San Francisco 49ers beat writer. Chris, hi. How's it going? You know, I'm excited for human contact. I'm excited for the for the first sports event in uh, six weeks or something next week, the mm-hmm. NFL Draft. And, then, and I wanted to break that down with you, where we see the 49ers going, where we see them not going. 49ers don't have a draft pick in rounds two, three, and four. So we're talking about the number 13 pick Overall, we're talking about the number 31 pick overall and what they might do. Well, their two biggest losses this offseason so far have both been in the starting lineup. One at receiver in Emmanuel Sanders, who was acquired uh, in the midseason trade with the Denver Broncos. Of course, the 49ers sent a third round pick and fourth round pick to Denver for that deal, which is a reason why they don't have those picks in, in this draft. The other one is defensive tackle, where they, the team traded DeForest Buckner to the Indianapolis Colts for the number 13 overall pick. So uh, in terms of immediate needs in the starting lineup, I think you have to start there. But looking at the future for the 49ers, they're going to have a need along the offensive line at some point because their left tackle, Joe Staley, uh, his retirement is looming. Whether or not that's this offseason or within the next couple years remains to be seen. He's signed for the next two seasons. He is not committed to playing next year, although I, I think he will play. But it would be wise for the 49ers to maybe – find an offensive tackle in this draft they could they could groom to eventually replace Staley and then at cornerback you have Richard Sherman there who's entering the final year of his contract and then the other three top cornerbacks Akella Witherspoon, Kaywon Williams and Emmanuel Mosley who started the Super Bowl opposite Sherman all those guys are unsigned to be on 2020 so it's worthwhile for San Francisco to start looking at the future of that position there as well so I think you have to start with receiver fans will uh, we'll clamor for that one. This is a great receiver draft. The 49ers getting that 13th pick could land them one of the top three players in this class, whether that's Henry Ruggs, uh, CeeDee Lamb, or Jerry Judy. So those are the top three guys that fans are going to be talking a lot about. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if the team went defensive tackle, offensive tackle, or maybe even cornerback with that number 13 pick. We're talking about a team that has shown us what where their concern is in the past. And in the fall, they got off to a good start without Emmanuel Sanders, and they made a move because they, they recognized they need a number one receiver. I, and Emmanuel uh, is a very – different receiver from an, a typical number one. He's not a big deep threat. He's, he's a guy that's not afraid to go over the middle and get hit on a slant route. Um, and that's, um, it's a, a different t- skill set maybe than what we're seeing in the draft this year. But it does show, that move tells me that this is a, an organization that recognizes they need help on the receiving core. Well, I think year over year in the NFL, we see it that success on defense is tough to sustain, at least high level success. The 49ers can probably bank on having a top 10 defense next year, but I don't know that they can bank on having the best defense in the league like they had in 2019, particularly now without DeForest Buckner, who was their team captain along that defensive front. So your point about them needing a receiver makes a lot of sense because in order to make up for what they might be lacking defensively this season, they can make up for that offensively with Jimmy Garoppolo and, you know, getting another full season in Kyle Shanahan's offense. When you're talking about that skill set specifically in this class, I think Jerry Judy of Alabama is probably the most Emmanuel Sanders like type like player. Another guy to keep an eye on is Henry Ruggs. Passed his 40 time at the combine. He was in the four twos. He's the same size as Emmanuel Sanders, a touch under six foot, 190 pounds, and just an absolute burner, a really, really good athlete. But what's underrated about his game, I think, is is that toughness over the middle of the field. He's probably a better route runner than a lot of people think. That type of player in Kyle Shanahan's offense, that speed to spread the field, create space underneath where Jimmy Garoppolo loves to, to find his other targets, whether it's Kendrick Bourne or Debo Samuel or George Kittle. I find it interesting that we've spent a lot of time talking about the number 13 pick. And I think we agree, Chris, that there's, um, it would be wise to trade down from the number 31 pick if there's, if there's value uh, to going lower in the draft. But what if they keep that 31 pick? Is a, a second first round pick isn't bad? Yeah, it, it's a tough balance to, to sort of find here because the 49ers are a team in the middle of their championship window. So do they want to get somebody who's more likely to be an instant starter right away, like Cesar Ruiz, an interior lineman from Michigan, like you're mentioning? Or do they want to trade back and get more pieces that they can develop into the future as the older guys age out of the league, like Joe Staley, uh, I think it would be wise for the 49ers to trade back because the, doing that is is what you know the Patriots do a lot. It's what the Seahawks do a lot. Those teams that have 
sustain success over the long haul, which is what the 49ers want to do, they keep adding players, multiple players by trading back and, and maybe punting on the idea of adding one top level talent guys. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us here tonight. Chris Peterman, Sacramento B 49ers beat reporter. I'm Jim Patrick, sports editor at Sacramento B. Thanks for tuning in guys. And uh, we'll see you Thursday night.